Now we're ready to take a look at the basic approach of using singularity analysis to develop uh, asymptotic estimates of coefficients uh, from generating function equations. Uh, so uh, just to review the uh, transfer theorems uh, that we've taken a look at, uh, if we have uh, meromorphic functions uh, we saw in the last couple of lectures, then uh, we've got a uh, easy way based on uh, theorem, based on contour integration residues, but easy to apply theorem uh, that gives us the, uh, an approximation of the coefficient of z to the n, the ratio of uh, two analytic functions, uh, by simply uh, evaluating the derivative uh, at the closest pole to the origin. Uh, standard function scale, uh, lots of functions fall in that range, uh, then we can just uh, immediately use the, uh, the uh, transfer theorem that I just gave for the standard function scale, and that's based on the gamma function. Uh, and, but if it's not either one of those, that, that's when we're going to talk about singularity analysis. And here's the example of a type of function that uh, uh, might, that, need, that is neither meromorphic nor falls in the standard function scale. Uh, it's got uh, a square root, but it's got a product of that, it's a ratio of that and of some other function. Uh, so what we're going to do, the basic idea is to uh, get an approximation uh, of this function to functions in the standard scale uh, and then uh, do the transfer. Uh, in uh, next lecture, by the way, we'll look at uh, what happens when there's no singularities uh, at all. So, uh, but now we're going to talk about singularity analysis. Uh, now, uh, just a quick review of uh, one of the keys to singularity analysis is our ability to use the Taylor theorem to approximate functions at points that aren't singular. That's the definition of an analytic function is uh, it's differentiable uh, everywhere. Uh, if it's analytic at a point, it's differential everywhere at the point, uh, and that means you can expand it at the point just using Taylor's theorem. So uh, say if we have this function that I showed before, e to the minus z over 2 minus z squared over 4, and we want to expand it at z equals 1, uh, then we can just go ahead and compute the derivatives uh, and evaluate them uh, at 1. So uh, f of uh, the function evaluated at 1 is e to the minus 3 quarters. Uh, the derivative evaluated at 1 is uh, plus e to the minus uh, 3 quarters, because uh, 1 plus 1 is 2, and then there's a minus that cancels out. Uh, the second derivative evaluated at 1, uh, you can get e to the minus 3 quarters over 4, and so forth, and just use Taylor's theorem uh, to develop uh, an expansion of the function uh, at any point uh, that it's not singular. Uh, and that's a, a fine method that's uh, been known uh, for, uh, for centuries, and then that's uh, what we're going to do uh, for uh, singularity analysis is to exploit this ability to approximate functions at non-singular points uh, in terms of a, a power series. Uh, and that's what's going to take us to the uh, standard scale, uh, as, as we'll see. Uh, now, uh, nowadays, uh, we don't, you know, people uh, don't compute derivatives so much by hand anymore. Uh, you can just use a computer uh, for uh, a symbolic package. Uh, and so this is Wolfram Alpha. I type in, uh, uh, so say I want to know the series representation of square root of 1 minus 1 plus z over 2z at z equals 1 third. I can just uh, put in that function uh, at z equals uh, one third and how many terms I want, uh, and it'll tell me uh, exactly uh, the uh, expansion. So I don't have to compute that by hand. So people don't compute those things uh, by hand uh, so much uh, anymore. Uh, if you need to do it, uh, figure out how to get a computer to do it. It's a much faster uh, way to proceed. Uh, actually, uh, we're going to use these kinds of approximations. Uh, in this lecture, uh, only early on to demonstrate the method. Uh, in practice, uh, a great many of the uh, applications of singularity analysis are based on general schema where we don't have to do the expansion. Uh, it's all hidden uh, underneath the covers in terms of uh, general schema. Uh, but still, uh, it's important to remind ourselves uh, what it's all based on, and uh, Taylor theorem uh, is definitely it.
Uh, okay, so uh, here's an overview of the uh, general approach to coefficient asymptotics for non-member functions. So uh, again, uh, always we got to locate the singularities. In particular, we got to find the one closest to the origin. Uh, and that's what's going to give the exponential growth factor. Uh, that's uh, no different even when there's essential sing singularities. There's one of them that's closest to the or origin. So uh, just uh, a running example, we'll use uh, unary binary trees. So that's trees where uh, all nodes have degree 0, 1, or 2. Uh, we developed this generating function for it uh, using the symbolic method. Uh, closest uh, <coughs> singularity of the origin is z equals one third. There's another one further out uh, at minus one, but uh, that's the one that matters. So the exponential growth factor is going to be one over that, which is three to the n. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, first thing. Uh, so then the next thing is uh, to figure out uh, where the function is analytic near the dominant singularity. Basically, where's that slit? Uh, and then uh, uh, we're going to use functions from the standard function scale to uh, approximate it uh, near that dominant singularity using Taylor theorem, and we use approximations that extend uh, in principle. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> we'll look at how to develop for, th for this function an approximation like this. Uh, and we could again carry it out uh, as many terms uh, as we wanted. Uh, so that's uh, f first key is uh, we have to know where it's analytic. Uh, and uh, <coughs> we'll see how that comes out uh, in the proof. Uh, and then uh, the, uh, the, the other basic idea in singularity analysis is uh, now we've got the thing uh, expressed as approximation using the standard scale. Uh, we can do term by term transfer uh, and immediately uh, transfer this using the standard scale uh, to the result and even transfer the big O to the corresponding uh, result. Uh, that's another key to the method is term by term transfer is valid. That has to be proved uh, and that's one of the keys to the method. Uh, and uh, as I said in uh, the overview lectures, uh, this paper was a real watershed in analytic combinatorics. Uh, before that, uh, people knew things uh, kind of like this, uh, but uh, after that, uh, this is a scientific basis uh, for we can mathematically prove that uh, we can do these kinds of manipulations, uh, and that's what led to the development of general schema uh, and, uh, and many other things uh, that we won't have time to get to uh, in this course. So uh, uh, the whole idea of singularity analysis depends on the function being analytic in a region near its singularities. Uh, and uh, so, uh, again, uh, for square root and log, uh, usually talking about a slit, uh, and then the key idea is a thing called a, a delta domain, and they call it a delta analytic function. So that's one that's analytic in this uh, particular shape where uh, we take the slit and we uh, carve out a little V uh, near the slit, uh, and then the other way, uh, otherwise uh, it's a circle. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit weaker than uh, what the Hankel contour had, which is a little circle uh, cut out here. Uh, and, but uh, that, uh, that little difference uh, makes uh, a, a huge difference in uh, allowing the transfers uh, of the type that we're going to consider. Uh, may not, uh, not, people may not be able to understand uh, these kind of distinctions uh, without really studying uh, this derivation uh, in the book, uh, but uh, these, di these distinctions are there. Uh, and we'll look at just a sketch of that proof uh, in just a minute. Uh, just as a sideline, uh, you might wonder why that particular shape uh, uh, what this is is a, a map of Paris, uh, and Philippe worked at Inria Roquencourt, which is in a suburb of Paris. Uh, this is a, a blow up of the area a bit to the west uh, of Paris. Actually, this is the Palace of uh, Versailles down here. It's at the other end of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, re the pool for the Palace of, of Versailles, the, the big pool. Uh, and so uh, there's an auto route, and this little area here is Roquencourt, which is where the INRIA research uh, office was. 
uh, and everybody working in this field uh, over the 70s, 80s, 90s, and uh, 2000s uh, would visit Rochancourt for various periods of time. Uh, and uh, Philippe's office uh, was uh, centrally located there. Uh, a little bit down the road, uh, there was a place called uh, Corner Bar. Uh, maybe <coughs> many of you are too, rem too young to remember uh, the 80s. Uh, people would go, Philippe often would go to Corner Bar for a quick beer, uh, and at Corner Bar there was a Pac-Man machine. Uh, and uh, at that time, uh, that was uh, quite a novelty, and people spent uh, many hours uh, on the Pac-Man uh, machine at Corner Bar, uh, having a beer and a smoke. Uh, and uh, Now, Andrew Odlisko, who's the co-author of this paper, uh, denies that that's where the shape came from, but I know Philippe uh, too well. Uh, uh, so I'm sure he was persuasive. Uh, all right, so back to the math. Um, uh, let's look, take a look at how uh, that, that domain shape matters. Uh, now, the key I, one of the key ideas is this idea that we can do transfers uh, term by term, uh, even for uh, big O and little O terms. And uh, there's, there's a lot of a lot of words here. Uh, but uh, really, uh, this little table tells the whole story. If you've got something in the standard uh, function scale, uh, so you have a big O term, uh, you can uh, uh, transfer, if that function, uh, get that approximation to that function from the standard function scale, you can do the transfer uh, for the coefficient asymptotics. So big O of 1 over 1 minus C the alpha log 1 over 1 C the beta gives O of N and the alpha minus 1 log N to the beta uh, and so forth. So uh, those, uh, <coughs> as long as it's delta, delta analytic within its delta do domain, you can carry those transfers through. Uh, and that this is just a, a really very b brief proof sketch uh, just for big O transfer. And, ag and again, you can spend some time uh, studying the, the, the details in the book. But again, it's uh, based on uh, uh, integration uh, around an appropriately chosen contour. So if you know it's analytic in the Pac-Man region, then you can define this more complicated region, which has a big circle and a little circle and two uh, little lines connecting those circles. Uh, and in terms of our e to the i theta, uh, it's uh, technical, but not so difficult to characterize these curves. There's uh, one little circle, big circle, uh, and two lines. Uh, and then the question is to go ahead and do the uh, estimate for each one uh, of those lines uh, in uh, you know half a page in the book for uh, each one of these uh, showing that uh, the line segments and the small segments are the ones that uh, really give the uh, contribution again starting from Cauchy's coefficient formula uh, and uh, then the big circle becomes exponentially small and uh, so uh, eventually uh, can prove that result and again, Flagellet and Odlisko uh, proved that result. Uh, it's a very general result. The rest of us uh, can use it. Uh, so uh, understanding the proof is not nearly as important as understanding the uh, application uh, in, in the context of uh, analytic combinatorics. So then that gives us the three steps that we need for coefficient uh, asymptotics. Uh, we have to figure out where the singularities are. Uh, we got to establish that it's analytic in uh, a delta domain, a Pac-Man domain. Uh, then <coughs> we're going to do we're going to expand the function uh, in this area, and then approximate it using the standard function scale, and then do the transfer. Uh, now, in this lecture, we're just using the sim transfer, but it's very important to understand that the method uh, enables a, uh, arbitrary asymptotic uh, accuracy. Uh, <coughs> and then, so, so uh, tr term by term transfer means take each term in the function expansion to a term in the asymptotic expansion uh, of the coefficients. Uh, that's the flagellet Adlisco singularity analysis paper uh, where uh, it's a, a, a great paper to read if you're into reading uh, classic uh, math papers. Uh, so, uh, we'll just take uh, one example uh, and sketch how singularity analysis gives us coefficient asymptotics for this example. So that's unary binary trees. Every node has zero, one, or two children. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, combinatorial construction is it's a, a node and a sequence of zero, one, or two nodes, uh, trees, uh, which immediately translates to uh, that generating function equation. Uh, and if we solve that equation, just use the quadratic theorem, uh, then uh, we get this explicit form. Uh, that is not meromorphic. It's that, that square root of a polynomial. Uh, so it needs singularity analysis. So what we're going to do is, uh, well, you can plot that function and figure out that there's room for a Pac-Man region uh, <coughs> where it's analytic. Uh, <coughs> And that, so that singularity is at z equals one-third, uh, remember. Uh, and so then at z equals one-third, uh, the one minus three z part is uh, the, uh, the dominant singularity. We're going to take the rest of the function, say one plus z over two z, uh, and that's the one that I use the computer to expand. Uh, so it's uh, square root of three plus uh, big O of one minus three z, or we could add more terms uh, if we want. It's z equals one third. Uh, that, that's uh, square root of three. Uh, and so then if you multiply uh, that expansion times square root of one minus three z, uh, and then take care of this is z equals one third. It's just one minus z over two z is one is equals one third. Then you have the square root of three times square root of one minus three z. And then every term in the expansion has another square root of one minus three z multiplied in. So we have an asymptotic expansion in terms of n to the uh, uh, one minus three d is a three halves, five halves, seven halves, and so forth. All by the fact that it's anal this part is analytic and we can expand it in powers of one minus three z. Then we multiply by the square root root of 1 minus 3z, and we have a term in the, in the half powers. But those half powers are standard function scale, so now we can do a term-by-term -term transfer using the standard function scale uh, to take, uh, well, you, you uh, change variables, the 3z to z to get to 3 to the n, and then the rest of it comes out right from the table. The standard function scale is 1 over square root of 4 pi over 3 times n to the minus 3 halves. And then the next term is 3 to the n, n to the minus 5 halves, or we can get an asymptotic approximation. Now the next term is not exponentially smaller, it's just a factor of n smaller, and that's why we need the ability to take uh, more terms if we need them. Uh, but that's the basic process of singularity analysis for unary binary trees. And it's a very general process uh, that's going to work for uh, a great many of the functions that arise in analytic combinatorics. Uh, now, uh, one reason that we have confidence that singularity analysis uh, is, is going to be useful is that uh, the, the set of functions that are amenable to singularity analysis is, is closed. That is, if you have a couple of functions and you add them or multiply them or compose them or differentiate or integrate, well, there's certain technical conditions all the time. Uh, but uh, it's easy to show that, so for example, if f and z and g of z are, are delta analytic, then so is their, so is their product. Well, because you can approximate uh, f, uh, say, with, uh, uh, in terms of 1 minus z to the alpha, and you approximate z in terms of 1 minus g in terms of 1 minus z to the beta, uh, and then you can pull out the approximations of their uh, coefficients. If you multiply those two functions together, then uh, you can immediately pull out the coefficients of the product. So it says if you can do f of z and g of z, you can do the product. And you can show that for multiplication, differentiation, other things like that. Well, the kinds of operations that we perform on functions in the symbolic method are these kinds of things. We add them, we multiply, we compose them, we dif differentiate and integrate them. So uh, we, we think that if you get your functions uh, in this way, then you're going to be able to use singularity analysis. Uh, so that's a, uh, just a, a general uh, observation. Uh, actually, uh, we can do even better uh, and develop a uh, general schema that uh, free us from a lot of the detail, uh, even of singularity analysis for wide classes of functions. Uh, <coughs> that's just notice you don't multiply this way, you multiply uh, that way. You might think it's n to the alpha plus beta minus 2, but uh, it's worth uh, noticing that it's not. 
uh, that's for product, and uh, you can try doing some or other things to prove that if two functions are amenable to singularity analysis, their their sum is is uh, also or composition. Uh, so uh, the consequence is that the ge generating functions produced by the symbolic method are generally going to be amenable to singularity analysis. Uh, so that's an uh, introduction to singularity analysis, and next we'll go on to uh, schemas and transfer theorems.